where you've uh, you've said something, you can't take it back. It's too late. It's out there. It's hanging in the air. Daniel from uh, the Gold Coast in Australia says, "Hey Steve, once I asked a girl to be uh, ask a girl asked me to be honest about what I thought of her physically." Okay. <laughs> No girl wants to know the no truth. There, what's the wrong truth. with yeah, this you? This is a mistake you made. I thought I'd best just be honest at this point because you might respect that honesty. No. Perhaps I'd get off with her. No, what? <laughs> Fool. So I told her she was beautiful, only her head was a bit too big for her body. Oh. <laughs> there was just no coming back after that. Never did see her again. That's extraordinary. Well, what a Daniel. maniac! Daniel, you're a fool. I'm going to scrumple up that piece of paper. I Daniel, imagine David Beckham has that thought in his head every yeah. single day. <laughs> never has he mentioned it. Exactly. Never, never says a word. Never says a word. You That's look so wonderful, weird. Vicky. Uh, we've had an email as well from Giotti in, uh, in, uh, Jyoti, beg your pardon, in Bishop Stortford. We were talking about, uh, Facebook. Uh, you're not on Facebook, Steve, no. despite appearances. Yes. Uh, three different people called Stephen Merchant, it's all claiming to be you. Uh, she says, I found a phony David Tennant on MySpace. I say phony because he spelled Tennant wrong. Dol! So that's nice, isn't it? That's She's doing her biology homework about corn in Bishop Stortford. About corn? <laughs> yeah, about corn. That's fantastic. I look forward to reading that essay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Email that in, would you? A draft copy, or yeah. I'll throw in my thoughts. So, uh, Ruth, it's uh, time for you to choose a tune before we get to the end of the show, and uh, what have you come up with? Uh, well, Steve, much as I uh, dislike, um, you know, back uh, you played a very nice song for me uh, uh, about my engagement. I'm playing a song for my brother today, in memory of his 40th birthday, yesterday. Uh, it's a Robert Cray band song. Robert Cray was a, a kind of blues man from the 80s. Uh, the first gig I ever went to was Robert Cray in 1988, Ooh, classic. Uh, 27th of October, I remember it very clearly, and he was one of the first musicians I got really, really excited about seeing live, and this is a track which Eric Clapton subsequently followed, and I read on Wikipedia that, uh, that Robert Cray is currently touring with Eric Clapton. This is uh, the title track of his album, Bad Influence. You use me. Bad Influence from the Robert Cray band, the choice of uh, Rufus. Uh, it's pretty much the uh, last tune or penultimate tune on uh, this week's T-shirt. They had a kind of slightly sleazy sax uh, in the middle of that, mm. which probably might have... I've come up with an advert for which I think will be you. I hope it will be used in some kind of European ad campaign <laughs> and will ultimately be shown on one of those Chris Tarrant funny adverts from Europe, mm. right, where it's... And this is an idea where this woman... Uh, it's obviously flogging kind of either clothes, some clothes or something like that, or some kind of cleaning product or something. I don't know exactly. You figure it out. It's a beautiful woman, right? She's on the way out. She's looking at the clock. Oh, my God, I've got to go. She's She's ironing her, um, her, uh, blouse, whatever. Uh, or maybe she's ironing her trousers. <laughs> she's in her pants, <laughs> with her blouse on, ironing her trousers. No, she's got, no, okay, she's got all her clothes on, right? She's walking out, she, look, she looks in the mirror, she thinks, oh, the trousers are a bit creased. Whips the trousers off, starts ironing them, right? So it's slightly sexy, you know, in the European way. She's in her pants with her blouse on, right? So then she's ironing them. Then she's, as she's ironing, she looks in the mirror, she, uh, she sees her blouse a bit creased, right? So she takes that off, starts ironing that, alright? So now she's just in her underwear, right? European men, they cannot believe it. They're, whatever this product is, they are rushing out to get it, right? Then, um, just as she's about to go out then, as she, she's just finishing ironing her blouse, she looks at her bra, she goes to unhook it, some European voice, and that's the end of the advert, right? And you don't ever see anything, obviously, rude, do you know what I mean? But I'm thinking, that's a dynamite ad, it's got everything they want, you know, it's kind of sexy, it's sort of, there's a hint of something good, I don't know what it's advertising. What's the product? You don't know yet? No idea. Okay. I'm just, well, I'm, I'm a kind of ideas guy, Rufus, <laughs> right? I'm just coming up with ideas Are you saying that she European was thinking adverts. about ironing a bra? Yeah. Because that's never going to work. Well, I've never met someone in my life that irons a bra. My nana irons a niggas. Yes, but have you ever seen adverts on the Chris Tarrant programme? They don't have any <laughs> re any relation to real life. It's just an men, excuse. Saying, yeah. It's just an excuse to suggest <laughs> someone might one day be naked. <laughs> that's all that seems to need to happen. It's the sort of illusion there may be some nudity. Oh, you know, you know, it's kind of a cheeky voice. You can imagine this. I don't know what voice. You've got the tone of the, the, tone. the Scandinavian voiceover. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. Ooh, okay, Actually, awesome. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And there, it's always a kind of slightly. It's always there's something sinister about the voice. Mm. Like he's been watching it in those little booths, mm. thinking, oh, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, anyway, if you're uh, if you're a European ad director and you've got any idea on what you could use to uh, flog that, then by all means have that idea. It's free. I give that to you um, <laughs> in a in a bid to show my love of Europe. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much indeed to my cronies. We're squeezing a bit of Tom Tom Club. Uh, whack it on Crazy Jude, and uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Stuart McConey next. Yeah. Yeah. With the freak zone. All right. Back next week. Bye.
Green Day, When I Come Around, uh, on the Steve Show, BBC Six Music. Actually, um, probably ought to not say it like that, ought to probably say something like, uh, Green Day, When I Come Around, on BBC Six Music. I'll tell you the reason. Um, I obviously got into radio, um, partly for the free stuff, and also in the hope that I would get lucrative voiceover work. <laughs> Hasn't really happened, and I think it's because I'm not showing my variety, I'm not showing my sort of range. I've done a few here and there, people might have heard them, they'd have been big fans. And, uh, they'd have enjoyed my, uh, as I saw recently described on one document when I was doing a voiceover, non-corporate. I like the fact I don't sound corporate. I sound like a little bit of a maverick. Uh, I think that's what they basically mean. He's got a yokelish West Country accent. Doesn't sound like he could work for any half-decent organisation. But I'm thinking now, during the course of today's show, maybe just throw things up there, mix it up a bit. So uh, sometimes I uh, just got that kind of... So um, I could get kind of the sun, maybe a weekend, you know. Um, in tomorrow, sizzling sun! Joran gets her knockers out! That sort of thing. <laughs> and uh, then maybe also some of that sultry kind of, hey, ladies, uh, if you need to use sanitary products... Do they have sexy sanitary product adverts? I don't know. But I don't know really thought this through. But um, all I'm thinking is uh, I might do a few of the links. Yeah, in that kind of late night. Uh, hey, thanks very much indeed. Uh, you know, it's uh, five past three. It's uh, the Steam Show. Maybe music. Uh, I, I might do a few like that. Uh, well, because I got a little bit of a, got, I got a terrible mucus problem, Jude. Thanks for flagging that up on the radio. <laughs> And um, the uh, treatment the doctors offered is not working, which is frustrating. But uh, yeah, so anyway, if you notice me um, uh, hosting the show in different uh, rhythms and styles today, then you'll know the reason. And don't be alarmed. Um, I will introduce you to my little posse of uh, types. Envelopes, envelopes. Life on the beach by envelopes. Available now. Um, that uh, is envelopes. I, the reason I play that is because it to put me in mind of uh, Rock Lobster by the B-52s, which I know is a favourite choice of uh, Sammy. She chose it in the past, and uh, let's welcome Sammy along with a round of applause from the Steve Wright star. Hello. Uh, nice to have you back, uh, Sammy, and are uh, you well? Um, I am. I'm very sore. I didn't get a lot of sleep. Um, very sore? I didn't ran get a lot for of sleep. so many taxis last night. It was unreal. Okay. I've literally, I don't move fast ever sure. at all. No. Um, most of my friends will back this up. I was like a whippet last night. Were you? I chased most taxi drivers around Sheffield. Um, okay, you can even <laughs> answer. What, why? They owe you money? No, you left your phone in the back? It was cold. I had hot pizzas. I wanted to eat them hot. Um, I ended up not eating them hot and therefore being quite disgruntled. Right, you know what? Down here in the south we have takeaway service. They will deliver them to you. An hour? An hour? I'm not waiting an hour. I'm hungry now. I want pizza now. So I want you went out, ordered pizza, now. then you had to run around and they got cold? They did, yes. Inevitably. I, c I haven't had a hot pizza in weeks. I always manage to either get stuck on a bus somewhere or... Oh, it's just a nightmare. And why are you sore? <laughs> just all the running. I literally never what did. What were you running in? High heels? No, these very boots that you see before you. Seem like a good practical uh, running boot. They do, don't they? So you'd you're just be out surprised. Of shape. Yeah, I'm completely out of shape. If I go up a set of stairs, I have to take a sit down on the top step. <laughs> Who doesn't? I know what you mean. <laughs> I mean, I, I rang quite a considerable distance last night for a short last. It's the great author today and I'm whinging about a little <laughs> trek I did round the streets of Sheffield. There's I'm, people um, crying. Now, I didn't think that he was going to make it. A lot of people said that uh, Super Posh Rufus was on a train somewhere, wasn't going to make it, and I thought to myself, it's not, it's not right. It would not suit Rufus to be late. He is the sort of man whose family ran India <laughs> for a while, <laughs> and if someone there was late, they, I would suspect they would have got a decent beating, uh, probably to within an inch of their life. Uh, it's not the sort of thing I would expect from Rufus. I was expecting to have to uh, lambast him. I'm amazed to say he's made it. It's extraordinary. Yeah. 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 Thanks. That's very, very impressive uh, work. Where were you coming from, and what was your delay? Well, I uh, spent the weekend with uh, my super posh friend Peter, who's got even more names than I have, actually. He's a kind of like Philip Arthur George Quincy Montgomery Brilliant. de Montfort uh, <laughs> Sands yeah. Clark. And uh, uh, I was staying in his extraordinary kind of mansion in uh, Cumbria, where his family farm Alpine alpacas right which uh, do you know what alpacas are no no they're like hairy llamas they are they're like they're like llamas they're, they're beautifully soft uh, fur and uh, is there much call for them uh, well not that much <laughs> unfortunately but the, the alpaca farming is doing qu farm is doing quite well each alpaca is worth between 10 and 15 thousand pounds oh. yeah. do you need an alpaca get in touch Six yeah. four, four, six. well i've got a plug why not alpacas.co.uk I said I would. Other you alpaca. Can't do that. Other it's alpaca. The BBC. I can talk about other alpaca herds being available. <laughs> you cannot plug your friends. What kind of? Oh. Is there anyone else on Six Music who's getting done for uh, for plugging alpaca websites? <laughs> I, don't think, I mean, goodness me, it's not very rock and roll, is it? Who the hell is listening to Six Music? Which of our drug addict listeners needs an alpaca, do you think, on a Sunday? A lot of them are probably thinking, wow, an yeah. alpaca, man. Yeah. If, only I could, uh, if only I could move in such rarefied circles that I would even know what an alpaca was. Yeah, I nearly rode one yesterday by mistake. 
<laughs> they're fairly um, timorous creatures, you know. Right. They, they they look at you. They've got huge brown eyes, sure. and they look at you. I'll, I'll show you some pictures later. Oh, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was filling up one of their feed buckets, For and sure. uh, Marmite and Montgomery were uh, sniffing around. One of them got between my under between my legs, at very long necks like camels. Started going for the feed, and I went no, no, and it, st- it suddenly re- reared up its neck, and I nearly slid down its neck and landed on its back, wow. and then ran around like Roger Corsi. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. That would have been something I'd done, I've actually seen on an incredibly posh. You've been framed. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just people getting in trouble with, yeah, you know, getting out of limousines and, mm. uh, and their spats not fitting properly. <laughs> that would have been a fantastic. So, uh, well, great. Well, I look forward to more alpaca-based adventures, and uh, it's nice to see that contrast between uh, your pizza <laughs> excursions, running around trying yes. to get fake takeaway food, and you there riding an alpaca. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, uh, we have to crack on because we've got to get to squeeze some music in, and we have also another guest. Um, uh, I'm very pleased to say, of course, that Bruce Springsteen has a new album out, and um, it's had rave reviews, which I'm very pleased to see, and uh, it took me a little while to get used to it, but uh, it's kind of returned to... Uh, his sort of uh, fist pumping uh, rock and roll uh, with the E Street Band. He hasn't recorded with them since uh, about 2002. And the last time we did with them, The Rising was uh, sort of post 9 11 and therefore was uh, at times a little bit sort of downbeaten. Uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, an album which is um, classic rock and roll, but nevertheless has sort of swipes at Bush and the Iraq War, and it's a very mature album. And uh, last week, of course, we were listening to Ian Brown's rather lame attempt to uh, to sort of dissect the, uh, the, the the Iraq War conflict. And I think most people would say that Bruce has done it in a slightly more subtle way. This is the uh, title track. This is a, a track called Magic. One of the more mellow tunes on the new Bruce Springsteen album. A lot of the rest of the stuff is uh, sort of classic rock and roll. Um, as I say, but with sort of serious undertones. And uh, it's interesting that we play some Bruce there, because uh, occasionally we have, uh, as a guest on the Steve Show, uh, Vic Sharma. He is a, uh, for want of a better phrase, web guru. Um, he uh, understands the web. He goes on the web. He seeks out music from the web. Uh, he's just He just knows about the web. <laughs> and um, and here he is. Please welcome uh, Vic Sharma. Don't worry, pause and see what I said. Hello. And... Um, and uh, it's good to have you back. Now, um, when I say web guru, what I mean is, of course, that there's so much music now being uh, discovered, discussed, uh, explored on the web. I'm a busy man. I'm always on the lookout for new music, as you know, Vic, but I don't have time to explore uh, cyberspace. Of course you don't. That's why too I busy sign- being man of the year. Too busy being <laughs> a man of the year. I don't please, I don't want to. Maybe in your eyes, I'm the man. The I'm, man. I'm only a man, according to GQ. Um, uh, so what have you found for us? Um, well, uh, the first track I found um, is related to the tune that's just played in that it's a Bruce Springsteen cover. You know I'm always on the lookout for those. Um, and it's a cover of I'm on Fire by the kind of Brighton super minx songstress <laughs> Natasha Khan's band Bat for Lashes. Um, and I think it's been around for a while now actually. I think it was a B-side on her single Priscilla. But um, they're raving about it on the blogs. They're going mad for it on the blogs at the moment. And that's because um, there's a a video that's been released of her performing it at Lancaster Library. Lancaster Library is just like a Just a municipal library? It's just a regular municipal library. She went in for a Barbara Taylor Bradford. She took a guitar. (laughs) Why not? Well, you would imagine that. But it's it's an amazing thing, actually, because the librarian has decided to open it after hours. Right. And for the princely sum of two quid, he's been inviting bands like Bat for Lashes, like... Also, he's had uh, people like Mr. Hudson in the library, the long blondes, all playing there after Choosing hours. Mr. Hudson in the library is a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> kind of, you know, this kind of, like, fusty old dude, kind of, like, yeah. flicking through enemy and saying, I'll have that one next. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it's a fantastic performance, but the, the cover version that I'm bringing to you now is one that... Um, that Bat for Lashes did live on a radio station called PRI, which is a public broadcast radio station that originates in the States. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. Let's hear it. Bat for Lashes and her version of Bruce Springsteen's uh, I'm on Fire. And if uh, you're not a Bruce convert, then I always think that a good cover version can just uh, flag up just how great a songwriter he is. And that's uh, a beautiful tune. Any more you need to fill us in with, Vic, or we'll just uh, we'll come back to you later in the show for uh, more choices? No, yeah, except to say you can uh, download that track from Stereogum.com and also Pitchfork. Okay, thank you very much. And am I doing that above board, fully legal? That's absolutely illegal, actually, Steve. Really? No, no, I'm kidding. It's totally illegal. Ooh, careful. Come on. Six Music and the BBC's already in trouble. It's hanging by a thread. (laughs) The license fee. It's absolutely legal. I'd only bring legal fodder to you, Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, It's nice to uh, that while we're listening to that beautiful track,